Hi folks. Okay, so you'll recognize this image from last week's video when we were talking about creating that mybase.pp3 over inside of raw therapy. Yes. And so I hope everybody noticed I made an omission and I did correct it in a pinned comment in the description below. Um, but if you haven't seen that and you've actually made the mybase.pp3 as you saw it made in the video, if you just come over to the exposure tab like that and if you can see a little check mark inside this clip out of gamut colours, just uncheck it yeah, and then just go save and save it as mybase.pp3 okay and uh, then you'll be just fine and dandy um, i'm just going to click cancel because it's already saved out properly um i will explain this in a, the reasons for that in another video okay so i did say that oh, well, i think i said that we were actually going to look at processing this shot of this uh, gray wolf uh, chowing down on the remains of a moose carcass and um, that's what we're going to do today but we're going to do it with a little bit of a difference because i'm only going to be doing sort of ballpark adjustments but to brighten this image up uh, because if we go and switch over to the file browser and i just right click and go to processing profile operations and i go clear uh, there we go and then i double click again to bring it back into the editor and there we go so this is the unadulterated um view of the raw file as it came off the camera with the mybase.pp3 uh, adjustments made to it so that is chromatic aberration etc is removed from the image at their default values and you'll notice that clip out of gamut causes unchecked yeah sorry about that guys so what i want to do today is to show you um, the differences uh, between sort of basic make this image look a little bit better uh, adjustments three ways two of which you can do in the um, existing public release version 5.8 and the last one that i'm going to show you you can only do in a dev build so far and uh, so of course we are all waiting eagerly for the release of 5.9 and uh, when that's going to be i've no idea so please for goodness sake don't ask me because that just makes me ask the higher ups the dead guys and all they say to me is oh we don't know so there you go so if they don't know i don't know and if i don't know you don't know right that's it all right, now, there's another thing, there's an underlying thing that everybody finds raw therapy difficult. And they find themselves backtracking on themselves and undoing things and sort of losing the place. So what I want to get you to do is to also make use of this panel down below for snapshots. And I'm actually going to add a snapshot now. And you can see it says snapshot one. If I double click there, you can see I can rename this. And I will rename this my base. Okay, because we can keep flicking back to that. And so, the, what do we need to do with this image? We need to lift the exposure because as you can see by the histogram, we're missing a good stop and a bit of exposure. So, obviously, the first thing everybody's going to do is come to exposure compensation. So let's lift up exposure compensation. Yeah, okay, the wolf looks good. And this background here looks good. Um, but, yes, I've got the clipping indicator turned on for the highlights. And you can see that we've now got a load of blown highlights. Okay, so we can come in with highlight reconstruction and go to luminance recovery, say and then maybe just throw in a little bit of highlight compression and there we go yeah but let's just analyze what that's done 
we'll have to put 2.18 stops of exposure compensation in across the entire image. And it's left the existing contrast in the image and the existing saturation in the image. And everything has been turned up by 2.18 stops. Now, for some images, that'll work, that'll do. But for this image, and don't forget if you're over on my Patreon, uh, if you remember over on my Patreon channel, you've got access to this very raw file. Um, but the thing is, the, well, the snow sort of competes a little bit. Um, there's a little bit too much contrast there. The bright, it's a little bit on the bright side where it's bright and it, it sort of competes into me. I mean, believe me, I was there. There wasn't this much contrast in this scene. Yeah, the wolf didn't stand out from the snow quite so much. People like to see this sort of thing in images, but it's not realistic. And in the grand scheme of things, what we want to do is keep the realism, but just touch it, just kiss it a little bit, um, as opposed to cranking everything up to eight, nine or ten. And uh, th this is just a little bit leery for me. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a snapshot. All righty. And then we're going to double click that snapshot. And we're just going to call this XP Comp. Yes, for exposure compensation. Because let's face it, that's all we've done, apart from a little bit of highlight compression as well. Okay. So I'm now going to select my base again. And we're going to go to stick, stick under the exposure tab and we're going to come down to lab adjustments and turn that graduated filter uh, panel off. And we're going to activate lab adjustments. And, you know, I mean, there's two ways we can do lab. We can either use the sliders or we can use the curves. I'm just going to use the sliders for the moment. So, obviously, this needs to be lighter, doesn't it? The whole image needs to be lightened up. Now, I can lighten it up, but do you notice something? The image is being lightened up, but the contrast is staying where it was. Because if I put that much lightness in the wolf, using exposure compensation, what did we get? That's right, we got a load of blown highlights in the snow because the contrast of the snow was increased. And that's simply because exposure compensation is an RGB, red, green, blue, adjustment. All righty. It's not a tonal adjustment. Well, it sort of is, but if you adjust, if you make a tonal adjustment in RGB, you actually crank the colours up as well. And if you crank the tone and the colour up, you're actually cranking contrast. All righty. So when you come down to lab, you can control the lightness of the image completely separate from the contrast and separate from the saturation or chromaticity, as they like to call it here. And... It, it can be a little bit more precise if you do it on the um, curves, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. So we can actually add a little bit of contrast and we can add some chromaticity. And yeah, it looks all right. But you'll notice the wolf looks a little bit better, but the snow is a lot more subtle. So what we'll do is we will add a, another snapshot and we will just double click there and we'll call this lab and we'll hit the return key. Okay, so there's our lab quick process of this image. There's our RGB exposure quick process of the image and you can see straight away we go from lab to exposure compensation. You can see how we've just with one slider fundamentally up here, we've taken up the contrast and it's the contrast that actually makes this image 
for me, look too over the top. It's just way too over the top. It looks a lot busier than the lab process. That's a, a lot more subtle. Yes, we'd have to do a little bit more on the... Uh, a few more adjustments on, on top of this, with this lab adjustment, um, to just add a little bit of punch and separation to the subject itself. These are the, the wool. Um, but the snow doesn't need to be dialed back at all. So we've got a lot more control over our very bright highlights using lab than we have using the standard sort of RGB exposure compensation controls. Now, you can try that out on, or both those methods out on the existing public release version 5.8 of raw therapy. Um, but I'm now going to show you something different and I quite like it, but it's not available in the public release. It's only available in the dev build, but it will be available in Raw Therapy 5.9 when it comes out. Or you can go and download a dev build uh, yourself and gain access to it straight away. So now we've come back to mybase.pp3. We're not going to add any exposure compensation. We're not going to add any anything in this panel at all. All we're doing is coming over to Colour Management. Alrighty, now we've got a Colour Management panel inside the public release of Rural Therapy 5.8 and it doesn't look hardly any different to this apart from one thing. Abstract Profile. Now, <laughs> this is a strange old thing and I'm not using it in a way that it was probably intended for um, but well there you go that's just me yes so what i'm going to do with this abstract profile is i'm going to switch from none and don't forget this is only in a development build so please don't come back to me and say andy i can't find abstract profiles in my version of rural therapy uh, you won't unless you're on a development build okay and i'm going to switch to custom Okay, and yes, it's made absolutely no difference whatsoever. But the interesting thing is with these two sliders, gamma and slope. Now, I've had to clarify this with the developer who created um, uh, these abstract profiles, as indeed he creates most of the things which are inside a rural therapy. Jacques. Jacques Desmus, yes. Hello, Jacques, if you're watching. <laughs> I'm trying to trying to understand my terrible English, uh, my terrible accent. So, uh, yeah, for a non-English speaking French person, that, that is a real steep hill to try and climb. So, Jacques, I apologise, but well, there you go. All right, now then, what are these two sliders? Uh, these pop up things just drive me crackers but well there you go um now then we've got gamma and we've got slope now whenever i see gamma or gamma and slope um inside rural therapy i do get rather excited and uh, the last place that i saw them uh, was in color correction regions and um, so if you go and watch any of the videos on color correction regions inside rural therapy uh, you will see gamma and slope there as well now, slope controls the brightness of the more shadowy and dark areas of your image. And it controls it on a linear curve. All right. Gamma controls the brightness or lightness of your highlights and the majority of your midtones, all right, but it controls them via a logarithmic curve algorithm. And then there's a third algorithm which sits in the middle, which tends to blend the two together seamlessly so we don't generate any sort of posterization or banding artifacts. And it is quite, 
quite stunning. Watch this. Slope controls your darker areas. So if I turn slope up to something stupid, there we go. Wow. But you'll notice that the snow has not been affected at all, to speak of. Obviously, the darker tones in the snow have been affected, but the lighter tones haven't. So if I turn slope up again to some crazy adjustment. So what we've done is we've turned the shadows up, but we haven't turned the highlights up. So, and no, it's not like shadows and highlights because that's an RGB adjustment. Right. Now then, if I put those back to where they were by default, and we now go to Gamma. Gamma is going to control the lightness or brightness of our lighter tones. Rather like that. And it's not done a lot, has it? No because the image is overall very dark. So tonally, the image is going to be affected more by slope than by gamma. But if we do put some slope adjustment in, and not a, gr not a great deal, just turn it up a little bit. Now if we turn the gamma up, wow, yeah? And of course, the more you turn slope up, the more gamma you can bring to bear. So, of course, it, 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 you know, you can take this image to wherever you want to. So, all we're going to do is just sort of play around with these sliders until we get an image that we quite like the look of. And you'll notice I've still got my highlight clipping indicator turned on. And even when I got slider positions over here, I still wasn't generating any popped or blown highlights so I was able to put a lot more brightness into the darker and lighter tones of the image than I would have been able to using the exposure compensation slider all right so let's just have a, another little play and do we need to bring those darks up anymore not really. We don't want to lose a great deal of contrast in the image. All right, something like that. Let's lift up the gamma slider a little bit more. See, that's not had a great deal of effect. Let's turn that slope up. Turn him up a little bit more. Turn him back a little bit. And all you've got to do is just play around with these sliders until you get something you think looks halfway decent. And the reason I'm pointing this out to you is that these adjustments are very, very, if you use the word tractable, yeah, you can do on, you can, you, you can have some fine control with quite coarse adjustments. So it, it is somewhat easier to adjust and get an halfway decent image. So if I go into these shadowy areas, now, bear in mind, this was shot on a Canon 1DX, um, which is prone to a little bit of sensor pattern noise and a little bit of color noise in underexposed shadows. So you can see the noise we've got going here. Now, I could use a local adjustment spot or two to get rid of that noise, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to come back to the details panel and we'll come to noise reduction. And at the minute, it's set into lab conservative. We'll leave it exactly where it is, except we'll change from slider to curve. All righty. And all I'm going to do is just lift. And there we go. And so we've got massive noise reduction going on in the shadows. But I just want to come over to the out of focus part of the wolf. Uh, the wolf's backside and if we just turn noise reduction off temporarily you'll see we've added quite a bit of noise reduction to the backside of the wolf and it doesn't need it so all we're going to do is just grab this part of the noise reduction tone curve and we're going to basically bring it down to virtually zero 
and move it to constrict the noise reduction into the much darker tones. And so if I turn noise reduction off, we'll look at the wolf's backside out of focus and we see we've got colour noise going on in there and luminance noise. If I now turn noise reduction back on, you can see we've got lovely noise reduction in that background but it's hardly affected the out of focus part of the wolf's body that's because tonally the wolf's backside is up here alrighty so there we go so that's noise reduction done and let's just move over let everything drop and there we go and I don't think that looks too bad at all do you so all we're going to do now is add another snapshot and we will call this abs prof for abstract profile okay so let's go and have a look at these images or these snapshots so this is how we started out well it isn't that's how we started out and um, we did an exposure compensation adjustment which looks to me, really, really, really bad. We did a lab adjustment, which from a contrast point of view, looks a lot better than the exposure compensation version. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And then we've done an abstract profile adjustment um, and put a little bit of noise reduction in these darker tones. And if you swap between the lab and the abstract profile adjustments, I know which one I prefer. And it's uh, not any of the others we've looked at before. But you must remember that just because I like this adjustment on this particular image, on a an other image, it might be the worst one of the three. Okay, because people say, well, why why do you use one and not the other? And then when I say you process another image, Andy, you're using some other method. That's because there is no one method of doing any one job on an image that works for all images. No, there isn't. Sad to say. So if you want to get the best out of your images, you've got to tailor everything you know and learn. And um, you know what they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, or there's more than one way to process a grey wolf, yes. Uh, but one of those methods for one shot might not be the ideal method for another shot. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, guys and gals, hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. And um, if you want any other videos on anything very specific, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to go and um, uncheck... Um, clip out of gamut colors on your pp3 on your mybase.pp3 from the previous video if you've not done so already and uh, until the next time guys and gals stay safe stay well keep taking the pictures and i'll speak to you soon to root